Hello and welcome again to another financial analysis video with myself, Moe Damin, and Ted Wayman. So today we're going to be looking at NEU Technologies. Now the goal for this show is to help you improve your business acumen by helping you better understand the language of business, which is finance. And we do that by uh, working to, well, we do that by basically analyzing the financial statements of famous well-known companies so that you can learn how we do that and you can start doing the same process uh, with the same company or any other company that you're looking at, especially the annual and the quarterly reports. So quick note, uh, background around NIU technologies before we go into the finances, so you have some context. So NIU, uh, basically they, they uh, manufacture and sell uh, what they say, elec uh, two-wheeled electric vehicles for the urban area. So think of uh, scooters, electric scooters, uh, mopeds, as well as bicycles. Um, and, and there come some interesting notes about this business, which we will come on to. Now, this company was a request from one of our viewers, and I'll talk a little bit later, so stick around, because I'll talk a little bit later about how you can make a request of a company that you're interested in. Uh, so Dripper made two requests, right? Obviously, he's very keen about this business. Uh, so here is your video. I hope you find it useful. Um, quick note on the business. Now, uh, the they just released their third quarter results, uh, and sales were down by 20%. In fact, what is interesting is that 80% of their sales is still uh, to the uh, well, into the China market, and the Chinese market sales has gone down by 33%, according to their third quarter statement. Um, obviously, a reflection of the uh, strict COVID uh, lockdown measures that they still had back then, and obviously that's having an impact, but they are trying to expand into other countries further, like the US, UK, Europe, region, etc., um, quick note on the share price, and again, stick around for that, because towards the end, we're going to talk about the share price and look at that in context with what we've read about the financial statement, so you get a very complete picture of what's going on. They floated in 2020, and if you'd invested back then, you'd be sitting on a loss of about 20%. Uh, if you invested a year ago, you'd be sitting on a loss of about 70%. And interestingly, um, in the last five days, uh, the share price has increased 20%. So clearly some fluctuations going on there. We're going to look and see if something about the uh, financial statement can give us a little bit idea around why that might be the case. So let's transfer over to, to Ted, and he's going to walk us through the, uh, the financial statements and kind of teach you how you can analyze the financial statements of a company like this and any other similar companies in the industry. Thank you very much, Moe. Good to see you again. And good to see all of our viewers. Welcome uh, to, well, welcome back to our subscribers. Welcome uh, to those of you who have not subscribed. Maybe you're new to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please, please, please do subscribe. And if you like what you hear, then uh, do hit the um uh, the like and share button as well as the subscribe button. Um, now, here are the financials. This is their Form 10K. Uh, this is on their website. Um, and there's a lot of information about the business on there. Uh, and we are going to whiz all the way through all of this mumbo. Well, it's not mumbo, John, but it's all very important. But um, we're going to go down uh, to kind of the key uh, pages for me, which are the numbers. And the numbers start on page 145. So actually, we're going to start uh, on page 147 uh, of 189 with the income statement. So here is the income statement. Now, um, this is a Chinese company. So they are quoting in uh, in Renimbi, so in Yuan, okay? Um, and what they've got in the last column is the US dollar equivalent. So when we look at their revenue, their revenue, and, and this is, uh, they're big numbers here. So um, life would be a lot easier if they just maybe uh, took a few of the, um, uh, uh, you know, moved the decimal place, for example. But anyway, um, so three, uh, seven, three point seven. Uh, so you got three point seven billion. Uh, um, renminbi, which is basically five hundred eighty-one million uh, U.S. dollars. Okay, so that kind of just gives you an idea. So we're going to be talking um uh, in renminbi, but um, you know, if you want to sort of get the get your head around, if you don't think in renminbi, for example, and you think closer to the U.S. or or U.K. Um, or Europe, for example, then there is your dollar equivalent kind of obviously dollar the world's um, uh, reserve currency. So uh, sales, 3.7 uh, billion. 
uh, 3.7 billion from 2.4 billion, an increase of 52%. So very significant increase, 20 to 21. So these guys are growing and growing rapidly. And if you think and look around the streets, uh, you'll see lots of scooters around. I don't know if they make the scooters on the old streets. Um, uh, as Moe said, their biggest chi uh, market is China. Um, but this is, uh, you know, clearly a very, very popular segment. And these guys are growing. Uh, their gross margin here um, uh, is about 20%. Okay, so um, basically that tells me that if you pay $100 for an electric scooter, it costs them about $80 to make it. Okay, and that's a pretty consistent margin. And that doesn't appear unreasonable. They then got all the costs of running the business. So they're selling and marketing R&D and general admin. Interesting that they got all this R&D. So um, it's a competitive marketplace uh, and they want to stay at the forefront. They want their scooters to be the kind of, you know, right at the cutting edge. Um, so the total cost of running this business are about six, uh, uh, 600 million on a gross profit of 800 million, leaving them with after a little bit of government grants, which is quite nice uh, from the uh, Chinese government, I would guess, uh, leaving them an operating income or an operating Profit effectively of 252 million. That's just about a 7%. Uh, and then they've got a little bit of uh, other investment. Interesting enough, here they've got this quite a large, significant chunk of investment income. Not sure exactly what that relates to. We'll have a look at the balance sheet and see if we can have a guess. Um, uh, but that's a fairly significant chunk, uh, plus some interest income, a little bit of interest expense, suggesting there's a little bit of debt sitting on the balance sheet. Um, uh, and then they are paying tax as well, leaving uh, the shareholders with about 225 million renminbi, which is uh, about $35 million as a bottom line net profit. It's about 6% net margin. Um, which means that they are pro they're not massively profitable. Um, but I think rather than thinking about in terms of the profitability, we're looking at a company like this and thinking about the potential of the market. And if they can establish a, you know, a good brand name, a good foothold in that market, as the market grows, these guys will grow along with it. So there's our income statement. Let's go and have a look at the balance sheet, see about the financial strength. So um, up here, we've got the assets. Uh, total assets are about two point. For trillion, uh, that's about three hundred and eighty-three million um, uh, dollars, uh, and that is predominantly the current assets. So these are a manufacturing business. This is the stuff they're manufacturing with the property, plant, and equipment. They don't really have a lot of of other um, assets. Um, uh, you'll notice that there's also this uh, right of use leased asset. So again, um, uh, you know, some of the interest payments will be on that. That's uh, you know, the difference between buying a photocopier and, and buying a photocopier on higher purchase, you know, it's still effectively your photocopier. So um, there's just a distinction between those two there. So there's about 400 um, million of, you know, stuff that they need uh, as manufacturing. Um, but what they do have is um, uh, on their current assets. Now look at the current assets, cash, and then all the way down to about here, all of this is basically cash. So these guys, you know, they floated, they've done a fundraising, they're stuffed full of cash, and they're using that cash now uh, in order to sort of, you know, fund the business and drive the business um, uh, up. And then just below that, we've got accounts receivable, people who owe the money, inventories, um, and then a few prepayments. So what you'd expect to see in your um, uh, in your current assets. So, so, you know, nearly two trillion of current assets compared with about half a trillion of non-current assets. In terms of the liabilities, um, some of the liabilities are here and some are on the next page. These are the current liabilities, the things that we have to pay soon. You'll notice that their current liabilities were at 1.1 trillion compared with the, um, uh, let me just, um, so uh, current liabilities 1.1 trillion compared with the uh, current assets of 1.9 trillion. So liquidity doesn't look like an issue. These guys are stuffed full of cash. Um, so, you know, they, they, you know, they've done their fundraising. They've got a lot of money. They've also got quite a lot of debt sitting there. Quite interesting to see that there's, you know, they've been raising debt during the year. So um, there's a little bit of debt here, notes payable. Um, and it's quite interesting that they're short term note, notes payable. So you wouldn't usually see that. Um, uh, and we'll see on the current non-current liabilities that there doesn't appear to be any long-term debt. Now, the other thing um, that I can't quite work out is if you notice here, this line and this line, this is advances from customers, 
17 million and deferred revenue which is basically money paid to you in advance of you providing the good or service 32 million put those two together that's 40 million now i don't know how you know uh, it would make sense if this was a company that was running the scooters i renting them out and people were paying on a subscription basis um uh, but this looks to me like people are paying them in advance in order to secure orders okay uh, and that's obviously going to have a um, positive effect on their cash flow statement so uh, quite interested to notice uh, to note those two i wouldn't i wouldn't have expected to see a lot of deferred revenue for a manufacturing business unless of course you know what they're producing everybody wants and therefore people are actually you know paying a deposit now in order to secure um their supply chains um, here's the non-current liabilities. Again, um, some more deferred revenue. So this is looking like, you know, people are paying them today, but they're not going to get the actual product until, you know, over a year's time, uh, which suggests either that they've got a very, very strong um, uh, supply uh, uh, order book pipeline of business or. Well, I, I don't know what the or is, so um, I can't think of any other reason of, of having that deferred revenue. Now, if anybody knows this business better than I do uh, and would like to comment on that, then please do leave your um, uh, leave your comments in the in the comment section. Do um, uh, help us out here. Obviously, you can be as polite as you like. In fact, you can be polite. Please don't be impolite. Um, here's the operating leases. So you remember we talked about, you know, they've got debt. Um, uh, so they they do have uh, sorry they they paying interest and therefore they've got operating leases which are funding uh, the right of use assets okay and there's some in the current liabilities as well so um, not a huge amount of debt they're 47 million uh, leaving them with total liabilities of nearly 1.2 uh, if you remember their total um, assets are about 2.4 billion and the difference is the um, uh, the equity now the equity um, uh, down here let's just move that up a little bit so the equity very much funded through the investment so this is the kind of the um, uh, the flotation raised 1.9 uh, trillion uh, and you'll notice that they're actually sitting on retained losses so yes they're making a profit this year and they made a profit last year um, but they haven't been making a profit forever okay so they have been making losses and now so sort of proof of concept getting it all working getting people to be interested in it and now those losses are starting to bear fruit that investment um, uh, and they are starting to make profits and the idea is that they will then you know repay that investment um, uh, cover those losses and and start to be able to pay dividends um, uh, I'm sure Share buybacks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So balance sheet looks pretty strong to me. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing really kind of jumping out. Um, uh, in terms of the um, uh, in in terms of the um, uh, the business. Um, uh, we've done the we've done the income statement. Here is their movement in equity. Um, so uh, we're looking at this column here, the accumulated deficit, and you'll notice that you know they they you know they do have this you know massive loss. I mean, this is the beginning of 2019. They had a 1.1 trillion. Um, uh, Renimbi loss, uh, uh, and then they've been making profits ever since, and that loss is just slowly starting to be eroded, you know. And they will, in the next few years, based on these numbers, uh, they will, you know, cover those losses. They'll be kind of in in, in profit, so to speak, and, and the company, and it's very much funded through um, uh, this uh, um, uh, uh, through, through through the issue of shares. Okay, so um, we can see. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit of share based compensation, so we don't actually have the um, the listing, um, so to speak, in terms of where they actually um, uh, you know, raise that money um uh, through the listing uh, on this on this because it'll happen before 2019. I'm looking at the um, uh, the this is the cash flow statement. So the cash flow statement um, this is our our, our key number here. Very very strong cash flow. So yes, they're making a profit. And they are generating cash. Now that's good. So these guys, they kind of, you know, they turn the corner. They're starting to generate cash. They're still investing in the future of the business. They're growing. They're growing rapidly, um, uh, and they can keep that cash in the business, and they can use it in order to fund um, their growth. Um, quite a lot of so, so some depreciation. There's the depreciation and amortization in there, which is. Um, uh, a non-cash expense based on the property plant and equipment uh, they've got some uh, share-based compensation so they are paying their um, customers uh, sorry they're paying their staff but they're paying them in shares obviously that's going to save their cash flow um, uh, and there's a little bit of um, uh, 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 sort of movement in the um, in the uh, working capital as they grow they need more cash tied up in the working capital 
Um, down here in the investing activities, look at this section down here. Just um, if you are reading these, be very careful. Uh, some of you will be uh, um, uh, will remember or, or will have seen this in in previous videos. But um, this this bit here, this isn't really investing. This is more just parking cash. I've got some cash and I need to put it to one side, so to speak. So you'll notice that these two numbers are pretty large. This is just, you know, I've got some money, I put it on deposit, I need some money, I take it off deposit, okay? Because of IFRS, they have to account for it uh, through their investing activities. But, you know, to all intents and purposes, this is just cash. So what we're really interested in is this one here, which is where they're buying property, plant and equipment, um, uh, uh, you know, to, um, to uh, for the future of the business. And the rest of this is all just basically parking in cash. Um, and then financing activities down here. Now, quite interesting. Um, you can see this this line here suggests that this is a, a, a this is a subtotal. Um, it's not a subtotal, so I think you know you just ignore that, ignore this line here. I don't know why they've got it in. Um, uh, but again, you can see the proceeds from short-term bank borrowings, the repayment to short-term bank borrowings. This is refinancing. Okay, so this is debt refinancing going on, um, and. Uh, and and you can see some uh, some some cash received from employee stock options. I they're buying back their shares in order to give them to the um uh, to the um uh, to the employees. So you know at the end of the day they've got a lot of cash sitting on the balance sheet, but actually they've got lots of investments as well. So the total amount of cash, as we said, it isn't just cash cash. It's also um uh, investments which are 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 you know don't aren't shown on this um uh, on this sheet. So really the summary is for these guys they are you know that they're they're, they're they're profitable they're generating cash they've got a strong balance sheet um they're growing they're growing rapidly you know they're ticking a lot of boxes um you know th th there's nothing there's no kind of you know nothing to be worried about i think in terms of the uh balance sheet uh income statement in terms of the financial statements the performance so if we have a look at their share price um we can see now this is quite interesting now just be careful here when we look at this um because they give the share price in us dollars and of course we are looking at renimbi so we need to make a little bit of conversion now i reckon um on my conversion i may have it wrong i reckon they're trading on about 12 times earnings um but um here we've got 100 times earnings now 100 times earnings is really really expensive um so i reckon they're worth uh so three that's about 400 million dollars i reckon that's about 2.8 trillion um renimbi i may be wrong i may have got my exchange rates wrong um uh, but i reckon they're 12 times earnings uh, but these uh, uh, this um, Google Finance reckons it's about 100 times earnings. Anyway, um, there's no dividend. Um, if, if it's really that, that, then that's expensive. That looks expensive to me. Um, but if, if it's 12 times earnings, then then it doesn't look overly expensive. I can't. These guys are not they're not going to go to zero. I can't see it going to zero. I'm not saying it can't go lower but I can't see it going to zero. I think this looks pretty punchy valuation up here. And so what you've really just seen here is a correction uh, where, you know, it's just come off the boil and just said, look, you know, we, we're moving away from the, the world of crazy valuations. I don't think it's going to go down. Um, I don't know the product very well. Uh, so I don't know whether they've kind of, you know, what their tie up is, for example. But um, there's no reason, I think, why this company shouldn't see, you know, some some pretty reasonable growth because you've got, you know, very rapid growth in top line, um, uh, good profitability. Um, uh, and as long as you've got a good product, which isn't going to get, um, you know, sort of, you know, taken out of the market by another um, a product, then there's no reason why these guys shouldn't be able to develop further. So there you go, Moe. That's kind of my take on um, uh, new technologies. Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it, 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 you know, the, the finances are looking good, pretty healthy. Um, is it an investment? I have no idea at all. I'm not a shareholder in it, um, but um, I'm sure that a lot of people will be reading that and, and saying, yep, I'll, I'll buy shares in it. I, I'm not sure I would be shorting these shares. Let's put it like that. There's nothing out there that just says these guys are going to go down in value, but I think they could well um, go up in value if they get their strategy right. Yeah, yeah, that, that was interesting. And thank you, Dripper, for making that request. This was a this is an interesting company to look at uh, and to analyze the financial statements. Uh, so I promised to uh, share with you how you can uh, make your request to us as well. In fact, about 98% of the companies we analyze here are requests from our viewers. So uh, very simply, on any one of our videos, 
All you need to do is leave a note in the comment section, of course, mention the name of the company that you're interested in and tell us why you're interested in them. So whether you are a salesperson and you're trying to sell your services or products to the company, uh, whether you're an investor, or even if you uh, are going to have an interview with this company and you want to get an understanding of their finances so that you can really impress the interviewer, whatever your story and reason, do leave that information in the comment section and we will analyze the company for you. Uh, so until the next video, thank you, Ted. Thank you, everyone else. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot, Moe. Catch you later. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful and informative. Now, if you want to know more about uh, what I do, then you can visit Talk Financials and find out about the training workshops uh, and the clients uh, that I work with. And the QR code uh, is on your screen right now. If you are interested in being able to do this yourself, to do some uh, financial analysis, there's a couple of resources. There is an online workshop. Uh, it's available on my website, or you can click on the QR code and it'll stay, take you straight through uh, to this online workshop uh, where you can learn to read and understand and interpret financial information yourself. Alternatively, there is a book available at all good bookstops, particularly a very big online one, and the QR code once again will take you through to the opportunity to buy the book, uh, and there is also a Kindle edition. Um, Otherwise, that's everything from me. Please, please, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe uh, to the channel. The more subscribers uh, uh, makes it uh, uh, means that you're going to get um, notification um, about uh, new videos coming up uh, and also the opportunity to you know, ask questions and do recommend any videos uh, or sorry, any companies that you'd like me uh, to analyze for you. Um, I think we've got a couple of uh, suggested next videos coming up. Uh, so please do uh, take the opportunity, have a look at the other videos uh, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you on the next video.